Good morning and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring and that's my fine wife, Beth. Speaking of you, yes, the very first movie you and I ever went to see was Patton. And that's correct. And we, it's, it's kind of, I was pondering about what we were going to talk about today. I recall the famous speech delivered by George C. Scott as General George S. Patton at the beginning of the movie. He said, we're not holding on to anything. We're advancing all the time. That's right. See, as believers, we're not just getting by. We're not staying in our comfort zone or shouldn't be. We should be advancing all the time. And literally, scares the hell out of the devil, metaphorically speaking, of course. When we understand who we are in Jesus, when we begin to operate in his authority, shockwaves are sent throughout the kingdom of darkness. Can somebody say, hallelujah? hallelujah. As we begin to, well, as we begin the assault to take back what the enemy has stolen, which is much more than a song, it's a scriptural, spiritual fact. It's part of our scriptural DNA, if you will. Things are changing. Here are seven indisputable reasons why we can move behind enemy lines. Hallelujah. First, we're not alone. Wherever. Were you ever picked on by bullies at school? Was there ever a time when an older sibling or someone else came to your rescue? How did it make you feel? Invincible. Mm. Isn't it nice to know that your older brother Jesus is always ready to make the bully of this world tuck his tail and run for the door? Joshua 10.8, 10.8, New Living Translation. Don't be afraid of them, the Lord said to Joshua, for I have given you victory over them. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up. You will never have to face any battle ever again alone. Why? Because Deuteronomy 21, 20.1, 20, 20, chapter 20, verse 1 says, Be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Romans 8.31, 8.31, classic, amplify. If God is for us, you one of your favorites. I love it. If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? I've already prayed that this morning in my devotion time. Hallelujah. Earlier on. Second, <clears throat> you're not going to fight the battle. Hallelujah. Because Second Chronicles... 2015, Second Chronicles 2015 says, Thus saith the Lord unto thee, Be not afraid, nor be dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but, but God's. Hallelujah. Here are four rich thoughts in this verse. First, we're told to be not afraid. When God says, be not afraid, that's exactly what he means. Let's look at it this way. If we're afraid, then we may be disobeying God. It's just that simple. If he tells us not to do something and we do it, then we're not trusting him or the word. This is a serious mistake and can create serious consequences. Second, we're, not, we're told not to be dismayed. The Hebrew word for dismayed means to be shattered be dismayed, be broken, be abolished, be afraid. Fear or being afraid creates an environment where it feels like things are falling apart, being broken down beyond repair. But that is not the case with God. In Deuteronomy 31, 8, Deuteronomy 31, verse 8, there's a reassuring verse of scripture that says, And the Lord, he it is <clears throat> that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. Third, the odds, the number and intensity of those coming against us, doesn't really matter. God wants us to know, let me put it this way, God wants us to not just know, but understand that in every situation we face, there are more with us than against us. Love those scriptures that prove that. Yeah. 
don't have time today. But the reality is this. All we need is the Lord to win every battle and strike terror in the heart of every foe. Fourth, we've got the A-team fighting for us. I love that. Needless to say, we're not talking about really the members of an elite commando unit that we see on television or in the movies. But we're talking about the real A, which is the (laughs) Almighty. The Elohim is on our team and the leader of our squad. In Psalm 118, 6, Psalm 118, verse 6 in the Message Bible, it says, God's now at my side, and I'm not afraid. Who would dare lay a hand on me? Third, there's only one thing you have to do. Mark 5, 36 tells us, 5, 36, be not afraid, only believe. When we believe nothing, we... See, when we believe with nothing wavering, we live a life without limitation. Honey, you remember our scripture back for 2015? That's right. It was Mark 9.23 in the God's Word translation. 9.23. Jesus said to him, as far as possibilities go, everything is possible for the person who believes. We must believe that even in the midst of an enemy attack, that with God's help, We win every time. Amen. Fourth, if we're going to face our enemies, we're going to call in the reinforcements. So let's look at Psalm 118, 5 and 6, excuse me, again, in the New International Version. It says, in my anguish, I cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting me free. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? These verses that we've been reading should give us a great and a lasting confidence that regardless of problems, situations, circumstances we're facing, we are going to win. Need more encouragement? Then you could make really the following confession or one like it. It says, when I pray with a pure heart, God will hear and answer my prayers. The Lord will set me free because he is with me. He will never leave nor forsake me. I will not be afraid of anything or anyone since they can't hurt me because it is God is for me. Who can be against me? Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I love Psalm 118.4. Psalm 118 verse 4. This is in the Message Bible. says, push to the wall I called to God from the wide open spaces he answered. God's now at my side and I'm not afraid. Who would dare lay a hand? (laughs) On me. Nobody in their right mind. Fifth, anyone who opposes you opposes God. Psalm 5, verse 11, 511, New Living Translation. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love you, love your name, may rejoice in you. Not only does God offer us protection, but our enemies become his enemies. Exodus 23:22. Yes. 23:22 amplified classic. But if you will indeed listen to and obey his voice, I'll be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Now that's what we call a real protection plan. Better than ADT. That's it. 6. You will come out of the battle unharmed. In Daniel 3, verses 24 and 25, Daniel chapter 3, 24 and 25 in the New Living Translation says, But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. There was a fourth man in the fire. And regardless of what we're facing, there's always a fourth man in the fire with us. And he's going to set us free from whatever has us bound. In Daniel 3, 27, Daniel 3, verse 27 in the New Living Translation, it says, Then the high officials, officers, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that in the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their head was singed and their clothing was not scorched. 
They didn't even smell of smoke. There was a fourth man in the fire, and regardless of what we're facing, he will be with us, and he's going to bring us out without a hair on our head being singed. Hallelujah. Nor smelling like smoke. There you go. <laughs> Seventh, you've got protection stronger than Cape Captain America's shield, Superman's cape, Iron Man's suit, or Spider-Man's web. Hmm. For those of you who like Marvel comics or movies. Psalm 147.11, 147.11, Message Bible. Those who fear God get God's attention. They can depend on his strength. Comic, be, comic book heroes would cower in the presence of our Lord. One more thought. Who does God take pleasure in? I can assure you it's not Captain America or Spider-Man. If you're obedient to his instructions, he takes pleasure in you because you become his hero. Psalm 16, 3, 16, 3, New Living Translation. The godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. Wow. wow. Live a godly life makes you a hero to the master of the universe. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Well, in a few days, it'll be Labor Day, mm. Monday, September 2nd. As we begin our 25th year of praying for people to have breakthroughs, if you need a job, a better job, increasing benefits, promotion, bonuses. Or if you're self-employed, you need an increase in sales. If you need an increase in investment or retirement income, we want to pray for you on Labor Day. That's it. Labor Day. Monday, September 2nd. Go to heraldherring.com forward slash Labor Day and uh, just fill out the form. Give us the information that we need to pray specifically for you. And know this, we cover every single line that you fill out. Mm, and we have a large number. We've oh already my, started. we already do. We, I, I think this will be the greatest response it we've ever be. had. That's it may be. Or we're close to it. Already, even with a few days left. That's right. Make sure you send it to us. If you don't do the Internet, then call 1-800-583-2963. When the recording starts... Give us the information we need. Mm -hmm. But be concise with that because we yeah. have to transcribe those. That's right. And that would be helpful. Hallelujah. If you've been blessed by the teaching, go to heraldherring.com. Click the button that says sow a seed. Just ask God what seed he'd have you sow. That's all we ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 830 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.